Thank you, um, Madam Chairman. I, uh, with my colleagues, would like to express my appreciation for the opportunity to talk about uh, this important topic. Um, if any of you have been to Utah, you'll understand why I believe Utahns have it in their DNA to be uh, good stewards of this earth. Um, it comes quite naturally. As a Boy Scout, I was taught to leave my campground cleaner than I found it. And I actually believe that both Republicans and Democrats believe that to be true. I regret the stereotypes that are often formed around this issue. Uh, somehow all Republicans hate the environment and all Democrats are alarmist. And I don't believe either of those stereotypes are true. I hope we can find common ground as we talk. You've heard from a lot of my colleagues today how important the forests are in, uh, in this issue. I'd like to add to that um, clean air and natural disaster resiliency. I think it's a mistake not to be talking about uh, resiliency to these natural disasters. There's been, interestingly, uh, something, in my opinion, that's been totally missed in our dialogue today and is almost always missed in this dialogue in Washington, D.C., and that's the impact of local and state governments and elected officials. Um, I believe, personally, having been a former mayor, that if you want to reduce it by two degrees, uh, mayors know how to solve this. And I think it's a mistake when we feel like there's somehow one magic fix at the federal level that we can mandate in a one-size-fits-all uh, to solve this problem. And I want to give you a quick example. In Utah, in Salt Lake City, in, in Utah County, we have a unique problem that we're surrounded by mountains on all sides. And particularly in the winter months, we get what's called an inversion, where a high-pressure system comes in and traps the air in those valleys. And therefore, if you ask Utahns what the largest environmental crisis is, they'll say clean air. And they'll say it about 15 times a year. Otherwise, we enjoy beautiful mountain clean air. In response to this, our governor, in his last State of the Union just several weeks ago, increased the money in his budget, not two times, not three times, but 117 times for clean air. Uh, introducing initiatives with transit, and we have a big issue with wood, wood burning stoves, and that was a big uh, part of it. Electrical vehicle uh, charging stations and things like that were part of his plan. I mentioned that I was mayor before I came here, and um, our city recognized the need to uh, take responsibility. And we produced something called the Provo Clean Air Toolkit. The name of the city is Provo. I would also invite all of you to Provo. And I would hope that you would all. Uh, search on the internet for the Provo Clean Air Toolkit, and in it, I think you'll see a masterful plan for cities about uh, what individuals can do, what municipal government can do, what colleges can do, what businesses can do to improve air quality. Um, we also introduced transit. We worked on walking and biking. Uh, as the mayor, I committed to ride my bike to work 100 times in a given year to try to inspire my residents uh, to do the same. Uh, we introduced renewables into, we're a municipal power city, we were 70% coal when I took over, we introduced renewables and gave our residents a chance to buy as much as 100% of their energy from renewables. And one thing, fun thing that we did is we also recognized no matter what we did as a government, unless the hearts and minds of our residents were in tune with this need, that we could accomplish nothing. So we came up with what we call the Provo Clean Air uh, Challenge, pledge. And we had several points that we challenged our residents to do. Uh, we asked them to carpool uh, as much as possible. We have a unique situation in Utah where you can find a church house on almost every corner. And most of us live within walking distance of that church. Embarrassingly, the Curtis family sometimes will take three cars to that church three or four blocks away. And we're not the only ones. And so challenging my residents to carpool uh, when it was appropriate. Uh, park and ride, instead of going into a drive-up uh, restaurant, was on the list. Not letting your vehicle idle for more than 30 seconds. And uh, ride or bike or carpool and use public transit wherever possible. So today I invite all of my colleagues to take this challenge, and I have for you a pin that we wear on our lapel pin in Provo, if any of you feel so inclined uh, to take that personal responsibility. Thank you, Madam Chairman. The very first one I've given out in Washington, D.C. But before my time expires, I would just like to really emphasize how important it is that, first of all, as a member of Congress, we personally are doing what we can do before we ask other people to do it. Are we changing our light bulbs? Are we, are we not using plastic bags and all of those things? And the second thing is to remember the power of local government in solving this problem and make sure that we're empowering them 
and not ignoring him. Thank you very much. I yield my time.